Welcome Climb of Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climb of Viewer News at climbofviewer.com, climbofviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is May, June 5th, 2018. And uh, wow, we got a crazy one tonight. Apparently China's upping their space weather modification game and trying to compete with HARP. With their brand new radar system, um, this was just published uh, Saturday, June 2nd, and I did, did a little digging into this, and we're going to break it down for you. Um, before we do that, of course, I'd always like to mention that over on climateviewer.com, everything you're going to see is free of charge, advertisement free, and open source. Um, if you could support me with a monthly donation on Patreon, I'd greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, you could buy me a pay, uh, coffee on PayPal. Uh, that's my only form of uh, monetary reimbursement for the seven years worth of work I put into this. Um, but boy, we got an epic, crazy video today. Could the new Chinese radar system really be used to play God with the weather? Um... Yeah, that is already a freaky title. Um, China's building a geoengineering system in the South China Sea that can knock out communication systems, but some scientists believe it could have more alarming uses such as causing natural disasters like hurricanes. Now, if you were to have said this about HARP in Gakona, Alaska, they tell you to put your tenfold hat on, but now that it's an enemy of the state, apparently it's, you know, fair game to talk about uh, controlling weather with freaking microwave beams. Um, let's dig in. So China's building a powerful radar system in the South China Sea. Critics say it could knock out communications, manipulate natural disasters, the system, which sounds like something out of science fiction, uses pulsed energy beams to study and manipulate electrically charged particles in the high atmosphere. It has civilian and military applications and could challenge U.S. dominance in both spheres. By challenging HARP, I guess? The U.S. military has already been working on similar geoengineering technology, but it has proved controversial with critics warning that it could allow governments to play God by causing disasters such as hurricanes, typhoons, and tsunami. Most scientists have dismissed these warnings as alarmist, however, the question whether the technology is really capable of doing this, but while American while the American program, funded by the Air Force, Navy, and universities, faces an uncertain future due to budget cuts, China is ready to speed up its own work in the field. Now, real quick comment on that. Uh, the U.S. Navy and Air Force sold HARP to the University of Alaska, and it's now being privately funded by anybody that wants to rent the damn thing out. And the reason why is because the Air Force has moved on to CubeSats and satellites and boats and trailers. Um, they've made them smaller, uh, more mobile, so this is obviously propaganda. Um, this is from the South China Morning Post. Um, obviously, this individual doesn't know much about what's going on with the American military, uh, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, the South China Morning Post has learned that Beijing is already starting to work on building a powerful machine in Sanya, a resort on the island of Hainan. Uh, the device known as the a high-powered incoherent scatter radar. There's a term you probably haven't heard before. Incoherent scatter radar. I'm going to explain that short-term ISR. Um, but these are ionospheric heaters, I will break it down for you shortly, would be capable of influencing the ebb and flow of subatomic particles as far away as Singapore at a distance of over 2,000 kilometers. Um, for us Americans, that's 1,200 miles away. The facility would be the most powerful radar in the South China Sea and regardless of whether it can be used to generate extreme climate events, would have multiple military uses 
including improving China's submarine warfare capabilities and disrupting other countries' communication networks by creating an atmospheric black hole. Ooh, black hole, that sounds scary. Punching holes in the ionosphere or boring holes in the ionosphere. That's what they're talking about. Um, some of you may be familiar with this term, artificial ionospheric mirror. Um, but we'll more on that in a minute. The Chinese Academy of Science official who visited the site in March expressed satisfaction with the progress on the project. According to the information of the Academy's website during the visit, Li Shushin, uh, vice president at the Academy, urged scientists to use the facility to serve China's strategic needs and pursue frontier issues in space, mainly like blowing up satellites and knocking out communications and screwing with the weather. Um, the machine works by generating rapid pulses of electromagnetic energy and beams them into the ionosphere, a layer of the atmosphere that can reflect radio waves thanks to high concentration of ions and electrons. By analyzing the radio waves bouncing back off particles, researchers can precisely measure the disturbance in the ionosphere caused by cosmic activities such as the sun rays. It can also measure their man-made modifications to space weather. So space weather modification is what we're talking about here. It's the same thing that happens on the ground, except it happens at about 300 kilometers in the sky, typically. Um, the data can also be used to correct the radar images collected by spy satellites to gather more information and focus more precisely on a specific target. By fine-tuning the high-energy beam, scientists could also stimulate the lower ionosphere to generate low-frequency waves and send them back to Earth. And that's what they were talking about when they said the submarine thing, creating ELF uh, waves or extremely low-frequency waves because they can travel to the bottom of the ocean. They travel through bone and stone. ELF waves ride along the ground. That's why whenever there's earthquakes, you see all the deer and, and animals stick their head to the ground and they can feel the vibrations and they know it's coming. Um, these waves can travel long distances through seawater, reach submarines in the deep ocean, which means the technology could be used to send instructions to subs from a base without the need to approach the surface to receive them. Um, this is what's called first strike. So basically, we send ELF waves to submarines to tell them to surface. So basically, it's like a ping pong, ping pong. That's all the sub even hears. And that's the signal to come up to the surface, point your little laser beam in the sky, talk to a satellite, and get instructions over an encrypted network to say, hey, we're going to end the world in about 15 minutes, launch your freaking nuclear rockets. Um... And that's really all the ELF waves are. They're a homing signal. They're the signal that submarines need to surface and, and get their information. How ionospheric research works, you got to love this. This is an almost identical photo to stuff we've seen from HARP. There's a HARP array. Um, it's an ionospheric heater. And you can see that some signals bounce off of the ionosphere. That's called over-the-horizon radar. Um, and disruptions from satellites are caused by screw-ups in the ionosphere, caused by solar winds and things like that. At present, the U.S. is still the leader in this field of science. It's built a pro similar program to study and manipulate the ionosphere in Gakona, Alaska about 10 years ago, 1997 to be specific. It started around 1994, was at full power at 1997. The main purpose of the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, or HARP, was to improve satellite performance and submarine communication, according to scientists funded by the U.S. Navy and Air Force. But building such a device was technically challenging, and power consumed by the project resulted in mounting costs. I heard it cost like $500,000 per hour to operate this damn thing. Um, so far, only about 10 such instruments have been built, mostly by the U.S., former Soviet states, and the European Union in strategic coastal areas such as the Atlantic, Pacific, and Arctic. I'll show you a map of those in just a minute. 
The largest devices can generate beams of extremely low frequency waves over large areas. Because they have the power to penetrate water, the Earth's crust, and the human skull, some observers have warned that governments could use the technology to set off storms or earthquakes or even control the brain. Covered that on my website as well. One high-profile skeptic of the use of technology, Alan Robach, a geoengineer, a climate scientist at Rutgers University in New Jersey warned in 2015 that governments could use the new technology as a super weapon and warned that the limits of the technology had not been yet explored. However, most mainstream scientists have dismissed such concerns as overtly conspiratorial, arguing that the technology has so far been used to study the weather in space and support military operations. Of course toe that line. You want to get that research money. They also point out, however powerful the machines are, they do not at present have enough energy to manipulate weather on any sizable scale or trigger trigger natural disasters. So, John Hersher, guy who was running the HARP program, said we need 100 gigawatts to steer the jet stream. So did Bernard Eastland. And on EastlandScience.com on Wayback Machine, you can actually go to his harp section. And he called it SIPA weather, C-I-P-P-A. And he specifically said we need 100 gigawatts to steer the jet stream. Just saying. The Sanya high-powered incoherent scatter radar would be the first such device in the South China Sea. The technology allows physicists to use extremely powerful radio waves to stir up the ionosphere, a physical phenomena called incoherent scattering. This allows researchers to measure the temperature, density, and speed of subatomic particles over huge distances and allows them to observe and influence the ionosphere, something conventional radar cannot do. That is also a lie. Missile defense radars such as PayPaws and Altair, and they're all mapped on Climate Viewer 3D, show them to you in just a second, um, have been known to create artificial aurora above them, or that's air glow, to make the sky glow from its microwave beams. So, not totally true either. One such device has been operating in the southwestern Chinese province Yunnan since 2012. According to research papers in Mainland Science, the device located in Quijing is being used to study the ionosphere and detect extremely small targets such as nanosatellites, like the Air Force is using, the CubeSats to plasma bomb the sky. Um such as nanosatellites and microscopic pieces of debris for military and civilian space projects. And then it says right here, scatter radar facilities around the world. So for that, we're just going to hop on over to Climate Viewer 3D, and we're going to go to the Geoengineering and Weather Modification section. It is also available up here in the Atmospheric and Sensor EMF Site section. So we're going to click on Ionospheric Heaters. And you can actually see all of these incoherent scatter radars that they're talking about from around the world. Things like the Harp facility up in Alaska, the Haystack um, Millstone incoherent scatter radar. I'm going to fly down to the ground and take a look at it. It looks like this. Big steerable dish next to a bunch of other dishes. And you can see all of these are you know, listed right here. So that's Millstone Hill, Sandstrom, Greenland. Uh, let's see right there. Go up here to Greenland. There's Sandstrom. It was not easy finding these. Took me three years total to find all of these, but you click the little thing, fly down to the ground. And what do you know? It's right there. Not a good shot of that on this one. Let's see if we can go to Bing, and get a better shot of it real quick. Uno momento, por favor. Boom. There it is. Ta-da! Told you so. All right, so um, photos, um, links to the Cedar database. Going to go through that too. But I've already mapped all these out back in uh, 2015. I'm constantly adding new ones to it. If you see that I don't have one of these ionospheric heaters on climateviewer.org, please point them out to me. They're a fascination of mine. Um, 
Ramford, uh, Ramjaford, uh, blah, 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 Norway. Um, that's the Tromso away, uh, array, um, Svarlbad, Norway, and, uh, we can look at all those. So just, in, let's go back over here, zooming out. We got the Norway one up here. This is called Spear. Um, and you got photos of it. If you want to blow those up, that's a tiny photo, but yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like. Um, very hard to find photos of these things and even harder to find them on a freaking map. Uh, it's like, where's Waldo on crack? Um, this is the Tromso array, Tromso ionospheric heater. Um, it's like the second largest ionospheric heater on the planet. As you can see there, uh, what else they got? Uh, Kharkov, Ukraine. All right. So the Ukrainian ones are right here. No, that's Uran. It's this one. No, that's Sura. Oh, no, that's those Tesla towers. Come on. It's in here somewhere. Let's just go through the list. Where's the list at? All right. So scrolling up to the top. Kharkov is... Uh, my goodness. There. All right. So there's the Kharkov array. Oh. Is it going to load a better picture than that? Going to switch back to the other one. See if they got a better picture. Oh, of course, it's covered in clouds. Gotta love that. Oh, there it is. So that's the Kharkov incoherent scatter radar. I switch between ESRI and Bing a lot because it's hard to find good satellite imagery these days. Whenever I can afford it, we're going to go with Digital Globe. They got the sharpest satellite imagery on the planet, and we'll be able to see all of these in extremely high resolution. I do suggest you please support my work on Patreon or PayPal. Because the second I can afford to replace Bing and ESRI with Digital Globe, you guys are going to freak out at how sharp their imagery is. Um, but anyway, what else you got? Arecibo, Puerto Rico, Jicamarca, Peru, Irkutsk, Irkutsk, uh, Russia. This one's pretty freaking amazing. I'll show you those three real quick. So, Jicamarca um, is up here at the top. Where's it at? The super darn in Jicamarca is right here. As you can see, we're in Peru. Scroll down here to the ground. It's a very large square. Um, here's a photo of that. Okay. So these things are all over the world. They're called incoherent scatter radars. They also have coherent scatter radars at the same facility. And right next to that is a thing called SAUZI and there's like actually seven different instruments at G. Comarca anyway. Uh, Arecibo is the one that you've seen from the 007 movies. The big dome is 305 meters wide. Um, at the bottom of it, they've now added some antennas. It's called the Arecibo Enhanced High Frequency uh, uh, ionospheric heating instrument and interestingly enough those two little guys down there those are people that's how big this thing is and those are the antennas and it's inside the dome and they hung a chain link fence over top of it it's called a cast grain antenna come on help me out here scrolling down so that's sitting over top of it that's the ionospheric heater at Arecibo Puerto Rico All right, closing that out resuming back in and what was the other one I said? Irkutsk. Because this one's pretty freaking amazing. No, we did that one. No, we did do this. So check this out. There's like one here, here. There's one here, here. And one over here. Now this one is freaking interesting looking. Because it's actually in a horn. Now I used to do car stereo installation. Whenever you put a speaker in a horn, you actually focus the beam. Um, so pretty, pretty interesting design on this one. 3.2 million watts on this uh, Russian one. It's in Ukraine. Now you think that that might have pissed off the Russians when over Ukraine, and maybe that has a little to do with why Russia is so pissed off about Ukraine because they lost control of some of their really cool toys in Ukraine. Uh, you could say that because there's quite a few of them over here, like this one and this one. 
Oh, that's the Tesla howitzer from back in the day when Tesla first created this stuff. Gotta love that. Nuclear testing site URDF3, Unidentified Research and Development Facility Number 3 in Kazakhstan. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is this is some interesting stuff to say the least. Um, the Shigaraki Japan, and uh, I think that Sanya I just added to the map tonight. Um, Shigaraki is the coolest looking one by far. Very science fiction looking stuff there. That's in Japan. There's their incoherent scatter to MST radar anyway. Won't get too technical. But these things are all over the freaking planet now. And the reason it matters is because when Secretary of Defense William Cohen said in 1997, others are engaging in an ecotype of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. This is what he was talking about. Stuff like this. Um, so this is not conspiratorial. I mean, I agree with Alan Robach. These are weapons of mass destruction. These should be banned immediately. We should do everything we can to stop this. And like I said, the last one being the Sanya one, but I mean, unfortunately, there isn't a lot of information on it. I got the Sanya VHF radar out of that. Um, I couldn't even find it on the map. The, the coordinates I got were on a mountaintop, so I'm not going to zoom down there. But I did find this longitudinal characteristics of spread F backscatter plumes observed with the EAR and Sanya VHF radar in southeastern Asia. And that's where I got the coordinates from. I will actually find this. I did see a building with a red roof right next to the mountain. So I'm assuming this is in the field across from it. Now well, let's zoom down there and go take a look. You'll see what I mean. Because uh, right about here, oh, I'm, I'm locked on it. Hold on to me. I'm turn that back off. Right about here is a building with a red roof. Uh, see, they want to do it again. Going to switch back to the other uh, other satellite again. Boom and no, it's only on Google Earth. Google Earth obviously has more updated imagery than anyway. There's a building with a red roof right here, and I'm assuming that's in this field right here. But regardless, um, we'll nail it down and we'll find it. Back to the story. So, researcher working at the site in the new Hainan project in Tiandu town said South. The implementation plan has been approved by the central government. Construction should start before the end of this year. So, they're building a new one down there near that Sony VHF. A key component of the instrument is a phased array radar panel about the size of a basketball court. So that's not very large compared to Harper, Jicamarca, Peru. The panel consists of individual modules that could be assembled and taken apart so the facility could be moved from one location to another in a short period of time. It's going to make it a real bitch for me to keep it on the map. That's why they put these things on boats and trailers and satellites. Um, they want them mobile. The power of its beam would be equal to several hundred megawatts. What? Several means seven. I hope they don't mean 700 megawatts because that'd be freaking nuts. Um, Harp is 3.6 megawatts, 3.6 million watts, several hundred megawatts. That's nothing to shake a stick at. Senior Chinese radar expert at blah, 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 capital of this place, who previously worked with the People's Liberation Army Institute of Telecommunications Engineering, confirmed that the project would operate with two separate divisions, one civilian research and one for military operations, just like HARP did. Um, HARP had a scientist side and a military side until... Um, they sold it to the University of Alaska, and now it's just up for sale, you know, up for rent. You can go rent it out and do whatever you want to with it. Sonya's in the China's main naval base and houses a fleet of nuclear submarines, but the researchers said that there were concerns that the island's power supplies may prove inadequate. Shortages have sometimes been reported on the island, which lacks large generating plants. Yet, they plan on putting anywhere from a hundred to seven hundred million watts into this thing 
Holy crap. Uh, the technology was jointly developed by the Chinese Academy of Science, Chinese Electronics Technology Group, and Nanchang University, all with close ties to the military. A smaller prototype has been collecting data over the past few years, according to scientists at the site. Well, what are they talking about there? Oh, well, I just mapped this out tonight. Brand new map uploaded about 15 minutes before this video is made. It's called the International Space Weather Meridian Circle Program. Um, and the Meridian Circle Program is their space weather modification network in China. So I just added this map tonight. It's brand new. Um, you could look through it. Things like um, up here in Mohi, magnetometer, digison, total electron content monitor, ionospheric scintillation monitor. Go down the list. Magnetometer, ionosign, magnetometer, ionosign. This one has a magnetometer, digison, LIDAR, that's a laser beam, all sky imager, Fabry Perot interferometer, bunch of scientific instruments. I won't get into all that too technical for tonight. But regardless, you go down the list, there's a laser beam, total electron content, high frequency Doppler shift uh, monitor. Um, this is China's Meridian project. And it's, it's part of monitoring the space weather over China. And they do this for a couple reasons. When somebody's going to shoot a nuclear missile at you, the rocket plume affects the sky. It creates air glow. So monitoring the ionosphere helps protect them from nuclear blasts, things like that. Um, and, you know, obviously with all of these high-powered microwaves, these incoherent scatter radars, they're able to um, modify space weather to create ELF waves, to create virtual antennas in the sky. To screw with your brain now if you want to really dig into this stuff you can come over here to climateviewer.com slash harp and my page is harp and the sky heaters and you can read all about it there's the harp facility um, a video of me explaining all this stuff but under the essential reading section um, that's exactly what they were talking about when they said mind control harp ELF and mass mind control um, extremely low frequency waves can subliminally influence brain activity. Here's the frequency chart. And the Russian government said, and I quote, a heart program not controlled by the global community will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceships and rockets, provoke serious accidents in electricity networks and oil and gas pipelines, like blow up pipelines, no joke, and have a negative impact on the mental health of people populating entire regions. They demanded that an international ban be put on such large scale geophysical experiments. Whoa, so the Russian government seems to think that this is a weapon of mass destruction capable of mind control. Um, back in 1978, they banned weather warfare. Uh, it seems like it's time to update that thing, to include space weather modification, because this shit is getting out of hand. That's why I proposed the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, an add-on to NMOD, the Environmental Modification Convention in 1978, because these types of weapon systems are turning our planet into a weapon system. And that's exactly what's going on here. But China's really going to take it a step further, um, because they're, they're not only doing the space weather modification stuff, they're covering Tibet in thousands of cloud seeding generators. Um, pretty creepy stuff here. China needs more water, so it's building a rain-making network three times the size of Spain. I just added that to the map as well. You can find that over here in the geoengineering section. Go to geoengineering and Chinese cloud seeding generators in Tibet. Click on that. And you can see this is the area that they plan on covering in thousands of cloud seeding generators. Don't believe me? China to install hundreds of thousands of fuel burning chambers in Tibet to induce rainfall and address water scarcity in China. 
click on that bad boy and you can see this let me uh close the sidebar let's make it bigger and that's what their cloud seeding generators look like they're you know basically a smokestack burning chemicals nice little animation here showing the burning chamber and how um this stuff floats up over the mountain it's called orographic cloud seeding or snowpack augmentation and this is the map of the rivers that all are fed by this location they plan on seeding so the poor tibetan monks as if they haven't been shat upon enough um they're now going to have to breathe all of these chemicals and by the way that's a rocket launcher back there they china lot launches launches a lot of rockets to do weather modification i'm kind of on a, a tangent here world's largest rain firm will generate a mongolian sized cloud to quench china's thirst and there's a little animation of what that would look like mm. seven years in tibet watch the movie it'll make you cry um but yeah china's making it rain and apparently they're doing space weather modification as well so daily star rag china creating powerful radar that can control weather and cause natural disasters fortunately it's true um this is that meridian space weather modification project monitoring project excuse me i said modification um a mega project of science research on space weather monitoring um that's what i showed you on the map what do we got over here the international space weather meridian circle program workshop um this is uh the deleted page couldn't get to it tonight so i had to pull it up on archive.org um showing all of the stuff from the meridian project and where their locations are i'll be going through with this with a fine tooth comb and actually putting the dots on the right spots in the near um, future but you see dig assigned i do have the dig assigned network on here as well these are ionospheric um sounding equipment they're up here in the atmospheric section and you can see that these are all over the globe too there's little green things so these work in monitoring the ionosphere for all the modifications that they're doing. They're all over the damn planet. There's a whole bunch down in Australia. Whoa, right? Um, but these are ionosons. So you've got ionospheric heaters, incoherent scatter radars, and, you know, these ionosons or digisons as they're, they're known. But here's a, a web page that I rely on a lot for some of this information. This comes from UCAR. I interviewed them at the Weather Modification Conference. University Corporation for Atmospheric Re uh, Research. List of ground-based instruments. And as you can see here, they've got a pretty lengthy list. Incoherent scatter radars. Uh, you can see the list right there. That's where I pulled this information as a starting point. I found uh, many more that weren't on this list. You see that a lot of these are closed. Um, you know, they're, they're no longer in operation. You can go to Google Earth and go to historical imagery and pull them up and look at them. Um, but this, this is an out of hand kind of thing. Um, these are just the incoherent scatter radars. These are the ones that are ionospheric heaters um, that are capable of modifying the sky. But the list goes on and on. Coherent ionospheric radars, there's those. Middle atmospheric radars, all of those. Oh wait, I have all of these on the map already. List keeps just on going. Um, ionosons and ion drift measurement equipment. List goes on and on and on and on. Spectrometers and photometers. At least photo photometers are just photographic you know they're not going to be shooting any laser beams at the sky um but regardless these are ground-based instruments optical interferometers like lidars faber perot's and things like that going on down the list middle atmospheric lidar i've got lasers on there if you guys want to see lasers they're right here uh lasers and directed energy weapons and uh let's scroll in here all the yellow dots you can click on them they have photos of the laser beams um so space weather modification kind of a crazy thing they're all over the damn planet 
Um, and really, there's no protection for any of this for any of us. Uh, they just fire their laser beams at satellites. They cook the sky. They use laser beams to steer lightning bolts. They use lasers to do ionization to make it rain. Um, space weather modification is a nutty, nutty process. And apparently China's trying to really up their game um, with this one. Um, kind of freaky. They got a little photo right here of what looks to be a mobile phased array radar. Um, if, if you want to see something that looks pretty similar to that, you can actually go up here to the heart facility and I mapped the heart facility out in graphic detail. So check this out. I'll fly down to here to heart and most people, when they go to heart, they only think about this field of antennas right here. That's all most people know about heart, but that's not all that's at heart. In fact, HARP is a multi-facility um, instrument thing. They've got a VHF radar right here. Looks like a bike rack, but it's not. Um, and then right down here, looks just like the Chinese one. It's called the Modular UHF Ionosphere Radar. It's got 512 antennas on it. Now, the, the ionospheric research instrument, this thing, has 180 antennas. This, the MUHFR, um, has 512 on it. It's smaller, okay? So, they've gone even further, and now they have something up here at Poker Flat Rocket Range, and it's called the Poker Flat incoherent scatter radar and it's even smaller this is called an amisr or advanced modulator incoherent scatter radar so these are the new design these are what you know basically um china's building right now there's two of them there's pfisr and then the amisr at resolute bay uh, I found that one as well. You can see it right up here. Boom. And that's the AMISR at Resolute Bay. Uh, 2 million watts on that bad boy at 449 megahertz. So zoom in over to there. There it is. Not easy to find this stuff. I play Where's Waldo with Google Earth and I find radar. It's, it's fun for me. I don't know. Um, but that's why I do this, do what I do. I do this to provide accurate information so that we can really see the big picture. And that's what I do with Climate Viewer 3D. I hope that you guys will come over to climateviewer.org and get educated on all this stuff. Um, but regardless, now that China's really trying to up their game, um, they're trying to compete with Tromso. And Tromso is now being upgraded. Uh, they have something called the EyesCat 3D. And its target is 100 gigawatts or 100 billion watts or the magic number that Bernard Eastland and John Hersher said they needed to steer the jet stream. Now, I fully believe that they can steer the jet stream already based on information that I've seen, especially based on history. So if you go right underneath this little thing, and you go under the ionospheric heater uh, section right here and close that up. You're going to see the Russian woodpecker, AKA steel yard, steel work. And what happened was they were accused of doing weather warfare over America during the eighties. And you can see the article right here. Shout out to Dominic Ramam, my homeboy from weather modification history. Is ELF able to manipulate the weather? Popular Communications, June 1984. And basically they said in the, in the winter of December, you know, December 1983, that, you know, 130 people died. 138 people died from freezing cold weather. The El Nino was out of its normal cycle. And they blamed it all on Russian weather modification using these Duga 3 radars. Um, nice little infographic on that here. And as you can see, they said that basically this woodpecker 
They crossed three beams. They created a high pressure uh, zone over America. Uh, General uh, Tom Bearden, Lieutenant Colonel, talked a lot about this. And it's scalar wave technology. It's based on Tesla technology. And it's being used as a weapon. We're right now in the middle of World War III, and it's a weather war. And they're using microwave beams to do it. And then the major countries, America, China, and Russia, are competing to dominate space weather using microwaves. So that's what this story is about. These are the facts. They're you know well documented in history. But one thing most people don't know about this little story right here, this Russian woodpecker, is that it was actually powered by a nuclear reactor. And as you can see right here, where are we at? Is that it? That's it. That's the Chernobyl reactor. After they blew it up. When did they blow it up? 1986. So in 1983, we had one of the coldest winters on record. They blamed the freaky weather over America on the Duga 3 radar or the woodpecker, which is right here, less than nine kilometers away. It is in the middle of the Chernobyl uh, exclusion zone or the radioactive exclusion zone. Let me close all this stuff up. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go to the nuclear section. And what do you know when we click here? There's the radioactive fallout and that's where all of this is at. Right there is Chernobyl and there's the Duga 3 radar. Um, and this is all related. They, Russia was doing weather warfare over America using um, an ionospheric heater. And as a result, and it's my personal opinion and many other people's personal opinion, that we blew up the Chernobyl reactor to shut down that Duga 3 radar. And that's exactly what's going on today. Russia is putting nuclear reactors on boats. And why do you think they're putting nuclear reactors on boats? Because they're probably putting ionospheric heaters on those same boats. Um, so history is repeating itself. It will continue to repeat itself. Because, you know, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And that's our slogan over at weathermodificationhistory.com. I hope that you guys will get educated on this stuff. I hope you'll spread the message about this. Because I don't like the idea of China building multi-million watt, um, you know, harps of doom. To do what we've all already gone through with harp. Um, it's just going to get worse. There has to be some kind of accountability. Uh, that's why I'm proposing the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. And the real only solution is this is, that I can see is the United Nations Security Council. And really raising awareness about this because there's not a lot that we small people, as George Carlin said, it's a big fucking club and you ain't in it. So the best we can do is hope for accountability, transparency, and some way to catch people in the act. That's why I built Climate Viewer 3D. That's why I'm proposing an add-on to the Environmental Modification Convention, NMOD. I hope that you guys will get educated on the weather warfare ban. Because we've had enough of this atmospheric experimentation. And I think it's really gotten out of hand. You can check out the 10 technologies used to control the weather today, ionospheric heaters being one of them, and come over here and check out my presentation on this subject. I hope that you guys will look at it and understand it because weather warfare is a real thing. Using electromagnetic waves to create earthquakes, to modify weather, um, and to screw with people's brains. Um, not cool. Um, this is, this is no laughing matter. They take this very, very seriously. So I hope that you guys will come over here and understand that we need transparency and verification. And the only way we're going to do that is if we build the sensors ourselves um, and not rely on the government to tell us, you know, when somebody's screwing with the weather. I hope to personally build a climate viewer for my backyard and I'll sell you one, give you the schematics, you can build one yourself. 
but rain samples, monitoring the sky for electromagnetic activity, all of that sort of thing. That's what we need. We need some kind of accountability, trust but verify. Bans do not work. For those who don't know, geoengineering has already been banned. It was banned at the Convention for Biological Diversity in 2012. Weather warfare was banned in 1978, and blowing up nuclear bombs was banned in 1958, and that hasn't stopped a damn soul from blowing up nuclear bombs. We all saw what Kim Jong-un was doing. So bans do not work without some kind of way to catch people in the act. And that's why my solution has two parts. I hope that you guys will support it. I hope that you guys will support me on Patreon. Um, because I fully intend on pushing this till we get something. Um, and the least we can do is demand accountability and transparency from the people who are screwing with the skies. We're not going to get it from the militaries, but we can, we can catch them in the act. And if we can catch them in the act, they have violated NMOD. And then hopefully the UN Security Council, as weak and useless as they are, maybe they can do something about it. Or maybe, you know, maybe it'll become necessary for the people to push back a little harder. I hope it does never come to that. But regardless, this is our, this is my solution. This is my way to contribute. I've done my part by mapping it all out for you so you can see the big picture. I will continue to make videos like this explaining in graphic detail the lies between the lines. But the short and skinny of it is this. China is now trying to outdo the biggest ionospheric heaters on the planet and with that kind of power steering hurricanes and steering the jet stream screwing with weather knocking out gps around the world um the sky's the limit so guys, I hope that this has been an informative video. I hope that you'll share this. Sharing is caring. I hope that you'll support me on Patreon and PayPal. And uh, please continue to spread the word about ionospheric heaters and the new term you learned tonight, incoherent scatter radars. Um, share the map with people. Actually click on the dots. You can, re you can learn a lot about um, all of these facilities. I put three years into creating some of these maps. And each dot is like a mini web page. It'll teach you all about it. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And even with the military, I want you guys to remember that it's important that you attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work. So come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.